And the other thing that we need to do, even as we move forward, is that even as we fight fossil fuels, even as we cut down fossil fuels, we don't want something else that is just as bad or worse. We don't want false solutions. And this is a big part of the climate justice debate, a big part of the climate justice issue. We haven't got the time to go into it uh, in detail here, but I'm here to speak about uh, the biofuels campaign that we've been very keen to support and involved in uh, in, in the campaign against climate change is, is from Biofuel Watch and Food Not Fuel, Peter D. Hi, thank you very much. Um, Ken said that we have to be brief, so uh, he said I've, I've got three minutes and hence I haven't really prepared because um, there's, there's three hours really I'd like to relate to you more than, than, than three minutes. And first of all, I'd just like to say that we're suffering a lot because of the greenwash that's being um, expanded by both uh, industry and interested parties, lobby groups in government about how nice biofuels are. Really they are not and they do not reduce emissions. Um, there's a letter recently sent to the EU Commission by 186 scientists in Europe and it says that it is false science to claim that biofuels reduce emissions. Um, now, it's very timely that we have this rally here because we are in fact in the middle of the most crucial time in recent years for biofuels and that is because the government is conducting a consultation exercise now on the future subsidies to be given to biofuels and um, it, as I say it's timely but it's also quite tragic because um, the government just last week the Treasury signed by George Osborne um, released a framework uh, document for infrastructure policy for the, uh, for the, for the, the um, years to come, the, the, the near future. That framework document cites specifically um, nuclear power and biomass incineration for energy generation. Um, it mentions offshore wind, it does not mention wa wave, wind, uh, sorry, wave, uh, tide or solar energy. Um, but uh, the concentration on biomass is particularly tragic. Uh, this, this rally is concerned with social justice and the activities of the Campaign Against Climate Change recently has been um, on the theme of social justice and biofuels are a particularly egregious topic relating directly to social justice. Biofuels are responsible for mass evictions in Africa and in South America and in Asia. You may be aware of the concept of land grabs that is getting a lot of publicity. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this fact, but I'd like you to bear it in mind and pass it on if you can. The largest land grabber in Africa is China. China is suffering desertification of its land and a booming population. Saudi Arabia is the second largest land grabber in Africa. It's a desert country and requires agriculture. The third largest land grabber in Africa is the United Kingdom. Why? Why a, an island in the temperate zone requires land in Africa? The reason is quite simple. It's because London is the finance capital of the Western world on this side of the Atlantic. And the land grabs in Africa are being perpetrated by city spivs who are riding on the subsidies given by our government. And we know this to be the fact. Because when the subsidies are used up, the land is left fallow. The people are evicted from it. Um, when the subsidies dry up, they don't actually produce any biofuel from the, from the land. Um, now, 44% of, of, the, of the arable land that's, that's uh, grabbed by foreign countries in Africa is for biofuel production. Please, I'd, ask you to do, I'd like to ask you to do two things. One is, go to the biofuelwatch.org.uk website. That will give you information on the political, the social, the economic <laughs> facts and scientific behind the biofuel concept. Secondly, please go to the ActionAid website because there you will find dozens and dozens of videos that tell you the personal stories of the misery, suffering and death that's perpetrated by the biofuel industry on communities around the world and particularly Africa. 
you'd be amazed. It is truly horrific. In Africa, in Uganda, a British biofuel company called New Forests has evicted 22,000 people from their own land, fenced it off, and on the promise of jobs, promise of wells, promise of clinics, promise of schools, have actually employed a few dozen people as armed guards to keep the true owners of that land away. That's what biofuels mean to the people in the developing world. Another company I'd like to cite is Sun Biofuels, famous in Tanzania for the very same reason, forcibly evicting people off their land because of promises to the government that are never met. Um, now, Phil asked me to be brief, so I'll try and sum up now uh, quickly. Marilla, could, could you please make yourself known? Um, because Marilla is handing out leaflets that have all the information that, that uh, we'd like to impart right now. Where are you, Marilla? Great. Could you please go to Marilla and get a leaflet? It's got, it's got the contact information for our campaigns in relation to, particularly, the government subsidy consultation. Um, the consultation ends on January 12th. The consultation ends on January 12th, so we have very little time and the Christmas break comes in between. Um, We've got, uh, if you go to Byfield Watch, there's a letter, prepared letter that you can uh, sign, you can sign it digitally, you can redraft it and send it to your MP. Or better still, bring it to your MP's surgery and have him, have a chat with him about the biofuel menace. Um, so, Phil asked us also if we could uh, engage you in a chant. So, I'd like to um, ask you please, if you would chant, food not fuel, after I say, no subsidization! Food not fuel! No incentivization! Food not fuel! No false claims of emissions! Food not fuel! No forced evictions! Food not fuel! No assassinations! Food not fuel! No stupid distractions! Food not fuel! No subsidization!